the Lesties. We back for the second half of the presidential review, okay? So if you're tuning in, know that I've already uploaded a video on McKinley through FDR. So you might want to go watch that one where we're starting in history. We're going from Truman and I'm going to take you all the way to Clinton. I might go to Bush, okay? So President Truman is the president that's gonna take over after the president that we just covered, and that was FDR. FDR unfortunately dies in April of 45, so he does not get to see the end of the war in Europe, which is, it occurs in May of 45. His vice president has to take over, and his vice president was a man named Harry S. Truman. Um, People tend to remember Truman as being the president that ended World War II by dropping the atomic bombs on Japan. He had to make a big decision, and finally, he says, I would, you know, I would rather go ahead and drop these bombs than risk the lives of millions having to invade Japan. So he drops the atomic bombs on Japan. And that's what people tend to remem uh, remember him for. But there are other things that we've also got to remember about Truman. Um, Truman is going to be one of our first presidents post the Civil War that really began to address civil rights. Truman does something big that changes the military forever. Truman is our president that desegregates the military, okay? Um, so if you look at pictures of Korea, pictures of, of Korea look a lot different from like pictures that you might see from World War II or World War I, okay? Because the military has been desegregated by Truman. Now, you might be thinking, oh, that's a great thing, unless you're a raging racist. And if you are, that's okay, too. Be you. But Truman desegregates the military, and not everybody was happy with that, okay? In particular, Congress. A lot of congressmen did not like Truman when he, begins to, uh, when he began to address these civil rights, okay? They began to stop working with Truman. They won't do anything that Truman wants to get done. Truman coins a term for that. Truman calls Congress a do-nothing Congress. He said, I'm serving with a Congress that refuses to work with, for me. They are a do-nothing Congress, and that term becomes popular. Unfortunately, Truman Dutton, his popularity ranking tanks because of not only him addressing civil rights with some people in the South, but also we get involved in a conflict in Vietnam. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I said Vietnam. We get involved in a conflict in Korea, and that's going to also make Truman unpopular with a lot of people because that war, we're going to go back to fighting in the trenches in Korea, just like we did in World War II. And people thought that it was pointless because we were trying to practice a little term called containment. You'll learn about that later, okay? So the Korean conflict toppled with some Southern Democrats or people in the South not really liking Truman because he was addressing civil rights. It's going to cause his popularity ranking to tank, okay? So Truman, not very liked towards the end of his preg uh not pregnancy. <laughs> he wasn't pregnant. <laughs> his, his presidency, okay? Well, the next president that comes along is going to be a president that's not new to you if you've already taken U.S. history. He wasn't a new name. He was a man that actually you should know from World War II. His name was Dwight D. Eisenhower. You should remember him from D-Day. You probably... You, you might remember, if you had a good U.S. history teacher, you, you know about Eisenhower from when you covered D-Day in World War II, okay? So Eisenhower is one of those feel-good presidents, people say, because he was our president during what some people call the 1950s, the glorious 50s. And I don't really understand why people overhype the 50s, because they think poodle skirts and ice cream, or some people was getting attacked with, with fire hoses and getting ate up by dogs. But anyway... Eisenhower, our president during the 1950s, okay? Great president. Well, if you see Eisenhower on that state test, there are a couple of things that you need to know. Eisenhower was very popular because he ends the Korean conflict, okay? So that's one thing that made him completely popular. The other thing that you should know about Eisenhower is that Eisenhower is responsible for changing the geography of the U.S. Forever, Eisenhower is responsible for the Interstate Highway Act, or you might see that as the Federal Highway Act. Eisenhower is the reason why we have these major, major highways is because in the 1950s, we're going to have a couple of booms. You're going to have a baby boom, okay? Largest generation of Americans ever born, the baby boom, okay? And that's for a couple of reasons. You'll learn about that. We're going to have a housing boom, okay? Suburbs are going to start to spring up. And you're also going to have a car boom. 
because of that we needed highways to you know house all of these cars so eisenhower was responsible for changing the geography of the uh or the geography of the united states because we get tons of highways with eisenhower now you should learn in the 50s and 60s you notice i keep mentioning civil rights because it was a really big thing and civil rights is the most tested thing so make sure you're paying attention eisenhower also addressed civil rights with a very famous incident known as the little rock nine incident um, you'll learn about it when I cover civil rights, but it showed us the power of the presidency. To give you a little idea of what Eisenhower did with civil rights, um, schools have been deemed to be desegregated with Brown versus the Board of Education and Brown case came down in 1954. Schools had to be desegregated. Well, not all schools desegregated. So our government is going to have to step in and force them. To give you a little background, there was a high school in Arkansas called Central High School in Little Rock, Arkansas, and they were supposed to desegregate. Well, there were nine black students that were supposed to attend that school. Well, when they showed up, they were met by the National Guard, blocked their interest in the school, would not let them in. President Eisenhower is going to act. He's going to send the National Guard home and he's going to send in federal troops to escort those kids to school. What it showed us was the power of the presidency. So Eisenhower is another president. If you see him, it might not be about Federal Highway Act and all that. Most likely it's about civil rights, okay? Because he was one of our civil rights presidents too, okay? His vice president is a man that you're going to remember. His name is Nixon. Now, when the election of 1960 came around, his vice president ran. Richard Nixon ran in the election of 1960. He ran against a man named John Fitzgerald Kennedy, okay? Nixon doesn't win, okay? The person that wins the election of 1960 is a president that we refer to by their initials. That is John F. Kennedy, okay? Um, JFK, the reason why that election is so important is because the election of 1960 is the first election where 90% of households had something in their homes, and that's television. This was the first time that people were able to turn on their televisions and see our presidential cam uh, candidates debating each other, okay? So now, appearance mattered, okay? So what you had was a man named John Fitzgerald Kennedy running against a man named Richard Milhouse Nixon. Although they had completely different backgrounds, they were actually pretty much alike when it came to the issues at hand, like civil rights and Cold War containment. They were alike. What some people say edged the difference out for JFK was looks. Now, Richard Nixon wasn't a bad looking guy, but he wasn't JFK. Okay, we could see people now. It's kind of like Miss Richards and the bad looking woman, but, but I ain't Rihanna. Okay, and that's what ended up happening, okay? Some people say that television caused this election. It showed us that personal appearance matter. A lot of historians say that, think about President Taft, the one that got stuck in the bathtub. Think about FDR, our president who did a lot during the Great Depression, carried us through World War II. But unfortunately, you remember he had little to uh, no use of his legs. Some people say that unfortunately, he might not able to have been elected if people knew that about him. And now we can see. So JFK wins the election. And JFK is one of those presidents that when I ask kids, who are your favorite presidents? Kids always say JFK. And when I say why, they don't know. They just sit there. Or they'll say stuff like, because he was assassinated. And that makes me want to send them to the counselor. Like, why is he your favorite because of that? Okay. If you see Kennedy on the state test, it could be a couple of things if you see kennedy it could be the space race and that's really all cold war containment but it could be the space race the name of uh, jfk's plan to get us to space was called new frontier what you should know cold war is going in we're on we're in the heart of the cold war the soviets are kicking our butts they're going to get the first animal into space they're going to get the first man into space they're going to get the first man to orbit earth but jfk makes a promise that we will get the first man on the moon and he called that program the new frontier okay so that's one thing you might know about jfk jfk is also another uh, famous president that this you might know it about volunteering okay have you ever heard the saying ask not what uh, your country can do for you but what you can do for your country that comes from JFK because he was really big on giving back. He created a very, very famous organization known as the Peace Corps, which was a volunteering organization. Some people think that was us being friendly. 
to be honest with you, that's all Cold War II containment, trying to keep communism contained. And you'll learn about that later. The other thing that you would probably see for JFK, if you saw JFK on the state test, once again, you should know what it is, civil rights, okay? At first, JFK was very slow to act on civil rights because he didn't want to upset Democrats in the South, okay? So at first, he was slow on acting on it. Then he begins to address it. And unfortunately, it's going to be a part of JFK's demise. When he begins to address civil rights, it upset a lot of Southern Democrats. So he goes on a campaign down into the Deep South to try to gain some Southern Democrat support. One of those places that he visits is Dallas, Texas. Unfortunately for JFK, on November 22nd, 1963, as he was in Dallas, Texas, Texas trying to gain some Southern support, there was a man named Lee Harvey Oswald that assassinates and kills JFK, okay? So while he began to address civil rights, he doesn't really get to do a whole lot with it because he's going to be killed before he can, okay? Now, we actually don't know why um, Lee Harvey Oswald did it because before we could really question him into detail, a man named Jack Ruby pulls out a gun, kills Lee Harvey Oswald. And that's why there's so many conspiracies that still persist. What we do know is that it was at that moment that JFK's vice president has to take over, okay? His vice president was a man named LBJ, not LeBron James, dummy. His vice president was another president that we refer to by their initials. His vice president was a man named Lyndon Baines Johnson. The interesting thing about LBJ, everybody in his family had those initials. His wife, Lady Bird Johnson, his daughters had the initials LBJ. Even the dog had the initials LBJ, okay? While LBJ is a president that people remember, either you remember him for positive things or not so positive things, okay? When LBJ takes over, he says that JFK's issues will become my issue. So what he says that he's going to do, he's going to continue um, JFK's fight for civil rights and poverty, okay? His fight to end poverty in the United States was a program called the Great Society Program. And at this point in your U.S. history class, you've probably learned about some of his programs to fight poverty. And there are things that you've probably heard of. If you've heard of Head Start, okay? That's that uh, pre-kindergarten uh, program for low-income children. If you've heard of Head Start, that's a great society program. If you heard of Medicare, health insurance for the elderly, um, great society program. If you've heard of Medicaid, health insurance for children of impoverished families, great society program. If you've heard of Job Corps, anything that deal with poverty at the time, that's a great society program that LBJ came up with. So he was really big on eradicating poverty. He was that way because LBJ witnessed poverty firsthand. After graduating from high school, instead of going straight into college, he actually went through the depression and he went and he rode the rails and he saw poverty firsthand. After that, he actually went and he became a teacher, okay? At a school in Texas where, where most of the students weren't even English speaking students and they were very impoverished. So he really cared about poverty and he tried to eradicate it or end it with his Great Society program. So if you see LBJ, what you'll see, it could be about ending poverty. It could also be the big one, civil rights. Y'all, I'm almost 100% sure. I would almost bet my wig, but this is one of my favorite wigs, so I'm not. I would almost bet my wig that you will see LBJ and civil rights on that state test. LBJ is your president that is responsible for most of the civil rights legislation that you talk about in your U.S. history class, okay? He is responsible for the biggest piece of civil rights legislation passed post uh, the 13th, 14th, 15th amendments. He's responsible for the passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. And I'm pretty positive that you will see that on the state test. What that act did is it ended segregation in all public places, okay? Not just schools, anything you can think of, segregation ended. Pretty positive you will see Civil Rights Act of 1964, okay? LBJ is also our president. The Voting Rights Act of 1965, today, nobody has to take a literacy test when they vote, okay? LBJ, you might see him for that. We've already discussed it in a previous lecture, that 24th Amendment that abolished poll tax. Now you don't have to pay to vote. All of this is J... Uh, no, I'm saying JFK. LBJ stuff. LBJ was a huge civil rights president. Ms. Richards is telling you, if you see LBJ on that state test, 
your mind needs to automatically think civil rights, civil rights, civil rights, civil rights. Huge civil rights president, okay? Um, the only other thing that you could see J uh, LBJ for, and I'm, I, I think that it's rare that you would, but it could be the Vietnam conflict, okay? So LBJ takes over after JFK. We've talked about him eradicating poverty and being a huge civil rights president. Something else that people know LBJ for is the conflict in Vietnam, okay? Uh, but he wasn't very liked for it. A lot of people thought that LBJ was a liar, okay? They didn't trust him because of Vietnam, because some things are going to come out. That war, just like Korea, is going to be one of those drawn-out conflicts. People didn't see an end in sight. Now, just like with the election of 1960, television had a huge impact. Television is going to have an impact on LBJ's campaign as well because it's going to create something known as a credibility gap. Johnson kept telling us that the war was about to end. However, we would turn on our televisions and we would see, unfortunately, the bodies of our dead soldiers being flown home. We're seeing live executions on TV. You see all of these protests in the streets between the counterculture and mainstream America about the war. So Johnson's, unfortunately, his popularity is going to tank, okay, kind of like Truman. And it's because of that. Johnson knew that he wouldn't have the backing of his party. So Johnson decides that he's not going to run in the election of 68. Instead, guess who come back? Yeah, boy, Nixon. A lot of bad stuff happened in uh, 68, y'all. In 1968, literally something bad happened in every month of 1968. Whether it's the Tet Offensive in January of 68, Martin Luther King is assassinated in April of 68, Robert Kennedy, JFK's brother, is going to be running for president, uh, assassinated. Um, you had the Maylai incident. It's going to happen in 68. Y'all, just horrible stuff happened in 68. Some people say another bad thing that happened in 68, Richard Nixon is elected. Okay, let's move on to Nixon, who I think people really give Nixon a bad rap. I kind of like President Nixon, okay? People don't remember any of the good that he does, but if I could hear you right now, and if I asked you, what do you remember about Nixon? Most people say Watergate. A lot of people can't even tell me what Watergate is, but they know Watergate. Before we get to that big negative, let's talk about some things that Nixon did. The reason why Nixon was able to get the American public to vote for him is Nixon said a few things. He said, this country is so dirty with all of this protest and this hippie movement. He said, vote for me and I'll return us to the honest good times of the 50s. It's so ironic, he said honest. So people ran out and voted for him. He also said, vote for me and I'll overturn some of this civil rights legislation that was passed. And I'd slow it. Something that was going on at this time was something known as busing. So we now know that everything has been desegregated in the country. But you have to think about it. Just because schools became desegregated, schools still remained segregated. And this is why. Or did I say that right? Just because schools became desegregated, they were still segregated. And this is why. You go to Harrison Central High School based upon where you live, okay? So what would happen were your neighborhoods were still segregated. So what the government begins to do is a policy known as busing, where they would pick up children and bus them to different schools. Nixon was a huge opponent of busing. He said, I will oppose busing. I will slow busing. I will stop busing. That is known as part of his Southern strategy, getting people riled up in the South by promising to overturn some civil rights legislation. He gets elected, okay, by slowing, promising to slow civil rights and the return us of the honest time of the 50s. He's also the president, the first president to visit Red China. China fell to communism and Nixon is our first president to go over to Red China, okay? he People don't, they forget his salt, Strategic Armed Limitations Treaty. Nixon passes that. It's when we and the Soviet, us in the Soviet Union, we promised to stop making so many weapons of mass destruction. Y'all, people forget all that. All people remember about Richard Nixon, Watergate. So to give you a brief history on Watergate, Nixon, he wasn't trusting. Rich, Richard Nixon was like Miss Richards when it comes to these folks out here. I don't trust them, okay? That's why she's single. Let me stop this synthetic, okay? Richard Nixon wasn't very trusting, but he really wanted to be reelected in the election of 1962, okay? So Richard Nixon... Keep that in mind, he didn't trust people. Well, there was a committee to help reelect the president. And it actually, if you break it down, it was CREEP, the Committee for the Reelection of the President, okay? They were working to get him reelected. 
Richard Nixon wins the election. He gets reelected. But this is the problem. Without going into too much detail, because this video is already at 19 minutes, I know y'all are getting bored. They catch people breaking into the Democratic National Headquarters at the Watergate complex. That's why this is called the Watergate like scandal. So they catch these people breaking into the um, Watergate complex where the Democratic National Headquarters were. Well, some of the people that broke into that building, they were being paid out of an account funded by Creep, the committee to reelect the president. So what you should be saying is what has Richard Nixon done? That doesn't mean that he did anything illegal. We, we are not saying that he did that. What we do know is that he was involved in a cover up. This is what happens. Okay. We order President Nixon, he has to turn over some tapings that he had because like I said, he wasn't trusting, okay? So he had all types of phones tapped and all this stuff. They tell Richard Nixon, you need to turn over these tapings so we can hear what you've been discussing. At first, Richard said, Nixon, Nixon says, no, because I have executive privilege. Me giving you these tapes, that's gonna compromise national security. I'm not giving them to you. Yeah, Supreme Court rules against him. No, you're gonna have to turn those tapes over. This is the problem, y'all. We get the tapes and we're listening to the tapes and they're playing and then bam, everything falls silent. For 18 and a half minutes, it was pure silence when somebody had messed with the tapes. They had interfered with like what was on the tapes. At this point, we're going to be begin proceedings to impe impeach Richard Nixon. Well, Richard Nixon becomes the only president in history to do something. It was pretty clear that he most likely, not only would he be removed from office, Richard Nixon probably would face jail time because that's obstruction of justice, okay? He does something that no other president has done. He quits. He said, all right, I resign. Now, you would think that that means that his vice president would have taken over. Well, no, his vice president was a man named Spiro Agnew. He went down for some crimes that he had committed too. The person that becomes president is a man named Gerald Ford. Gerald Ford went from being the Speaker of the House. And then so he's going to have to move up and become vice president because Richard Nixon's vice president, Spiro Agnew, gets in trouble. So he drops out. Gerald Ford moves up and becomes the vice president. Unelected. Well, then Richard Nixon resigns. So that moves Gerald Ford from vice president to president, Gerald Ford is our unelected leader. He served as your vice president and your president without being elected, okay? Um, now, kids always say, well, did Richard Nixon go to jail? No. And when you find out why, you'll understand why a lot of people didn't like President Ford. Once Ford becomes president, he does something that angers a lot of Americans. He pardons Richard Nixon. You know, the president has the power to pardon. When you are pardoned by the president or a governor, it's like you never committed the crime because it, you, of course you won't have to go to jail or you're removed from jail, but it's no longer on your record. So Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon. So Richard Nixon never faced any jail time or anything. The reason why that angered a lot of Americans is because if you or I commit a crime, we go into jail. If, if Ms. Richards goes to Piggly Wiggly and tries to steal a turkey, I'm going to jail, okay? <laughs> what that showed us, it seemed like Richard Nixon was above the law. That being said, it made Gerald Ford a very unpopular president. As a matter of fact, to show you how unpopular Gerald Ford was, he's going to have, I believe it was two assassination attempts on his life within a matter of weeks. One of them was a follower of Charles Manson. Okay, the, the serial killer. Yes, okay, so Gerald Ford was not very liked. The one thing that you should remember about Gerald Ford, if you see him on the state test, which I doubt you do, is it could be him parting in Nixon, but if anything, I could think it would be the 25th Amendment. The 25th Amendment, remember, is presidential succession. It shows us who becomes president if the president is incapacitated, okay? Y'all, Gerald Ford was not popular, and we felt dirty. So in the next election, when it comes around, y'all, we wanted somebody that was an outsider. And this person is going to be known as an outsider. He was a peanut farmer from Georgia, okay? We wanted an outsider. We wanted somebody honest because we felt so icky and dirty because of Vietnam and Watergate and all of these protests. So we wanted somebody clean cut. The man that we end up voting for is a man named 
President Carter. And no, I'm not talking about Lil Wayne, okay? President Carter becomes your president, an honest man. But unfortunately for Carter, he's one of those presidents that's going to be liked after he's president. As a matter of fact, he's even going to win the Nobel Peace Prize after he's no longer president. Um, the only thing that I could see you seeing for President Carter on that state test, which I think that is rare that you will, but I'll tell you anyway, President Carter was a very, uh, conservationist friendly president. He's actually the president that put solar panels on the White House. He was very concerned with the environment. Um, but he just became president at a horrible time. We were dealing with stagflation. OPEC had placed all these embargoes on us, so we weren't getting much gasoline. He just became president at a horrible time. Um, the only other thing I could see you seeing for President Carter, we say that he brought peace to the Middle East because he signed the Camp David Accords. It was a peace agreement between nations that had been feuding forever, Israel and Egypt. So we say he brought peace to the Middle East. Um, that's the only thing I could really see you seeing, or it could be the Iranian hostage crisis. You'll learn about that in my lecture. But the likelihood of you seeing Ford or Carter, it's slim to none. Usually what it does is, it goes from Nixon to Reagan. Reagan is going to be your next elected president. Now, when it comes to President Reagan, it's tons that you could see. For President Reagan, y'all, he was a beloved president. He was actually an actor before he was president out in Hollywood. President Reagan was so liked. If I pulled up the election map, it would blow your mind. And the second election that he runs in, President Reagan took every state except for the state where the other guy was from. Minnesota, I believe it was. Mondale, okay? And D.C. He didn't get D.C. He took every other state. However, if you see President Reagan on this uh, state test, the only things that I could see it saying, it would be something about his Star Wars program because President Reagan is going to be our president that brings an end to the Cold War, okay? And he was very smart about it. He knew the only thing that he really had to do outspend the Soviets, and he did that in the space program. He's going to beef up, uh, up uh, our defense, okay? Well, he was very pro-military. He's going to beef up our defense, and we outspend the Soviets, and then the Cold War ends. The Soviet Union is going to collapse. So the only thing I could see you really seeing for Reagan, even though he's one of my beloved presidents, I could talk about him for hours, it would be Cold War stuff. He brought an end to the Cold War. Make sure I didn't leave anything off. Um, yeah, that's it. Okay. Now, his vice president actually becomes our next president, and that is um Daddy Bush, as I like to call him, because remember, we got two President Bushes, Daddy Bush. Um, I doubt that you'll see him on the state test as well, but if you see Daddy Bush on that state test, um, it would have to be the Persian Gulf War. Okay, and that's all he ever talked about. When he was running for election, he used to say this uh, little slogan, read my lips, no new taxes. And he said it all the time, read my lips, no new taxes. As soon as he got in office, guess what he did? He raised taxes. And that upset a lot of people. But if we're thinking about it, he really didn't lie. He said no new taxes. He just raised the old ones, okay? Petty bitty, okay? If you see... Um, Daddy Bush on the test, which I doubt, it will be the Persian Gulf War, and that's going to be Iraq invading Kuwait. It has something to do with oil. You'll learn about that in the lecture on wars. But that's all it could really be. And he actually thought us winning that uh, Persian Gulf War was going to be his saving grace to get reelected, and it's not. Like, that wasn't enough for people. People weren't concerned with that. People were concerned with their pocketbooks, okay? The next man that's going to win is President Clinton not Hillary. She wasn't elected. Sorry if you thought. No, okay? It was her husband, okay? William Clinton. You know him as Bill Clinton. Most of you all, you know about him. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, <laughs> okay? But if you see Bill Clinton, once again, that's something I doubt you see, but if you see Bill Clinton, what I could see you seeing on there about him, it wouldn't be Monica Lewinsky in the sex scandal, okay? What it would be, it would probably be about NAFTA. It's an agreement that we're going to make with the other countries in North America, with Canada and Mexico, a free trade agreement between us. The only other thing I could see you saying about Clinton, other than NAFTA, that's pretty much it. You should know that he's going to be president at a time where our economy is going to soar. Our economy is going to be great. And you'll learn about that when I get to the era's lecture about the 90s, okay? But most likely you will see NAFTA, okay? After President Clinton serves his terms, the next election and the final election we have to talk about is the election of 2001. 
you're going to have a man named Al Gore run against a man named Bush. Now, Daddy Bush, Baby Bush is here, and Baby Bush wins that war, okay? If you see Baby Bush on that, it, it would have to be something probably with the war on terrorism, okay? Because unfortunately, uh, I meant the election of 2000, not 2001, I'm sorry. In the election of 2000, uh, Bush is going to win, but unfortunately for him, that following September, we know what happens to the United States, okay? 9-11 occurs where we uh, experience one of the most horrific terrorist attacks since Pearl Harbor, okay? And that plagued his administration. Because of that, baby Bush is going to declare war on terror. He's also going to come up with a new term called an uh, what is called an axis of evil, okay? North Korea, Iraq with Saddam Hussein. You'll learn about that as well, okay? Those are the presidents that you would need to know. If I'm being honest with you, from Truman through Bush, the presidents, in my opinion, that you might see tested, I am pretty sure you will see LBJ on that state test. Like, I'm almost 100% sure, and your mind should automatically go to civil rights. That's the one president you need to focus on. Truman and Eisenhower as well, because civil rights is so state tested. What you need to do with these presidential lectures is when you hear certain presidents, your mind goes directly to certain events. So if you hear FDR, your mind automatically, World War II, Great Depression. If you hear, I don't know, like I said, Johnson, your mind automatically, civil rights, Vietnam, something like that, okay? What you need to do is play these lectures back and find the key errors that these presidents dealt with. If it's a president and you're like, I really don't remember, like maybe Coolidge in the 1920s, most likely he isn't going to be tested. But if you do see them, you should think 1920s. What were the 20s like? Our economy was roaring. Use these lectures as a way to review, but when we get in class, I promise we're going to go over them again, and I'm going to quiz you on them, little buddy. So get ready. Okay. I love you guys. This is going to be the last one that I upload until we start tomorrow. I'm going to upload the errors starting tomorrow. Okay. I'll see you in class. Bye.